Minnesota. Hold on to the football, guys. Four fumbles on the night. Lost all four of them. Can't help but feel like we would be discussing a much different football game with a little bit better ball security from the guys in purple. But not to take credit away from the 2-0 Philadelphia Eagles. A lot to talk about with the defending NFC champs who open their home schedule with a win. A win, honestly, it, this, is, this is the perfect example of a beauty is in the eye of the beholder type of game. Because if you're the Philadelphia Eagles, you say, well, we got the run game going. Uh, we were opportunistic on defense. We managed to flex our muscles a little bit and put a game that had become in doubt away. DeAndre Swift looks exactly like the guy the Eagles traded for on draft weekend. When that trade happened, this is what you were imagining. DeAndre Swift, the former Lions running back, 28 carries, 175 yards, buoyed by a 43-yard gain in the fourth quarter that really kind of decided the outcome of this. Adds a touchdown for good measure. That's, if I'm an Eagles fan, again, if I'm, you see the ups and the downs. Like, once again, the Eagles allow a lot of points. Once again, they allow a 300-yard 300, uh, 300 passer. It's two straight weeks. Mac Jones also had 300 yards. Kirk Cousins finishes with 364 and four touchdowns tonight. There's a lot to be nervous about. There's a lot to say, ooh, I'm not sure. I like the way our defense is playing with all these young guys in the, on the back end. We talked on the preview episode for this game about rookies and young players stepping in at linebacker, at defensive tackle, at safety. James Bradbury didn't play in this game with a concussion. Kind of looked like it, right? Your offensive line doesn't look quite as mighty in pass protection as we got used to. Jalen Hurts sacked four times in this game, but, 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 but. If I'm the Eagles, I look at this and I say, even if we're only hitting our B game in these first two games, we're not clicking on all cylinders and we're two and zero. can't say enough about running the ball 48 times, 200, uh, 48 times for 259 yards, three touchdowns. Jalen hurts gets a couple of scores with a couple of those tush push sneaks that Philly is so famous for. I'm, I'm fascinated by the idea that again, you know, we, we say this cliche every year, they said it on the broadcast tonight. This is a different team. This isn't 2022. All of the, the credit that you get for being in a Super Bowl goes away. And even with all the mistakes that you saw from Philly and maybe failing to capitalize on things, only winning a game by six points when you're plus three in turnover differential, it's awfully encouraging that Minnesota can cut the lead to 27 to 21 with seven and some change, eight and some change to play in the fourth quarter. And what does Philly do? They go right down the field and reestablish control of this game. The Eagles had punted twice in a row. This is an ample opportunity for an, uh, for an unpoised team to fall apart, potentially give the game away. The Eagles go 75 yards in eight plays. They chew three and a half minutes off the clock in the fourth quarter. And again, DeAndre Swift really kind of announces himself as a major contributor on this drive in particular. They gave him the ball seven times on this game deciding drive. Again, they only ran, they only ran eight plays. He got the ball seven times for 63 yards, including the big 43 yarder. I'm curious to see what happens when Kenny Gainwell comes back from this rib injury. Again, there, there will be better fronts than Minnesota's. Let's not hype them up to be uh, this, this mauling defensive front, but 259 yards on the ground is 259 yards on the ground and 175 yard days don't come around very often. So I think you, you found the weapon you were hoping for in Deandre Swift uh, on the flip side of this, man, what a, what a frustrating start to the season for the Minnesota Vikings. This is potentially two games that you can say, we let this get away. A little, a little more obvious in week one. Like, they, they badly outplayed the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in week one. They lose by three points. And a minus three turnover differential is really the main culprit in that game. Two of those turnovers happening in the red zone. Again, I, I don't want to take too much credit away from the Eagles because this is a very talented roster. And the Eagles did score 34 points. But again, four turnovers by the Vikings. Dropped passes everywhere. Muffing punts. Running backs fumbling. The big one, which which we should probably spend a couple minutes on, is is the Justin Jefferson fumble that 
really swung this game toward the tail end of the first half. That's I I love these these situational football swings where the Vikings drive to the Philadelphia 31 yard line with less than a minute to play. It's 10 to seven, a little bit of a low scoring half. Again, Philly's offense, they found their rhythm by leaning on the run in the second half and toward the end of the first half. But in the early going, they were trying to wing this thing around. And with the exception of a couple long completions to Devonte Smith just wasn't going. That's how it winds up being 10, seven, the Vikings drive to the 31 yard line. Kirk Cousins finds Justin Jefferson for 30 yards, and he's uh, he's reaching for the pylon, loses the ball, goes out of the corner of the end zone, and all of a sudden, a gain that would have put the Vikings on the goal line with a chance to take a 14-10 lead turns into a fumble. If it goes through the end zone, it goes over to the other offense. Eagles get the ball. They drive for a field goal. At halftime, it's 13-7 Philly instead of 14-10 Minnesota is it really worth getting upset about the rule? I do think it's one of the dumber rules in football, but the rule is on the books. That's what it says. It's been that way forever. It's probably been that way since leather helmets. I don't think the league has any intention of changing it now because we see this at least once every couple of years. I think it's a harsh penalty considering that fumbling the ball out of bounds anywhere else is fine and and you don't get penalized that harshly. It seems weird that, you know, the Vikings were able to march downfield in a situational moment with very little time to play, highly competent offense. They get all the way down to the goal line and you penalize them that harshly. Like, sure, if you want to back them up to the 25 yard line because it went through the end zone, I can live with that. Taking the ball away from them because fumbling right there is magically different from fumbling out of bounds on the other 98 yards of the field. It doesn't sit right with me. Like I said, it's not going to change the rule and it's only week two. So what's the point? Yeah. Like the rules committee doesn't meet in September. That's not how this works. So it is what it is. Take Ketter, take Ketter bear, take better care of the football Vikings. Cause again, seven turnovers in two weeks, three against Tampa, four against Philadelphia, you're minus six in turnover differential. I mean, I don't need to listen to Kevin O'Connell, Vikings head coach, after the game to know that, that is the, that's the starting point. You're, you're not going to win a game losing turnover differential by, by multiple every single week. But, I mean, there's, there's stuff to like about this. I thought, all things considered, again, going back to the preview, I was worried the Vikings would even give Kirk Cousins time to throw. And the Vikings problems on the offensive line, Garrett Bradbury missed this game with a back injury. They definitely showed up. Kirk Cousins gets strip sack at the outset of the third quarter. Philly recovers. Josh Sweat with the big sack. They score two plays later. That kind of set the stage. The Vikings were playing catch up for the entire first half or second half, excuse me, because their offensive line couldn't keep Kirk Cousins clean. But by and large, it didn't get in the way of them having a highly functional offense. Again, Kirk. 364 for four tutties, 125.6 quarterback rating. Like, please forever ignore anyone from here on out if they bring up Kirk Cousins in primetime because of this game. Like, the guy balled. He definitely balled. Justin Jefferson, again, 11 for 159. He's over 300 yards two games into the season. I do not understand why the Vikings didn't extend him. I like, my man's going to be able to ask for like 35 million a year when this season's over and it's going to be warranted.